one thing that we'll see as we accumulate experience with differential equations is that there are a lot of tricks for solving differential equations, but sometimes you run out of tricks and uh, you can't really solve the differential equation that you're working on, at least explicitly. So before we actually accumulate tricks for solving differential equations, we're going to look at a couple techniques uh, for what to do when you can't find a solution to your differential equation. Uh, these techniques are going to be for first order explicit differential equations in particular. So here's an example of such an equation, uh, dy dx equals x times y. Um, right now the only trick we have for solving differential equations is guessing essentially and it might be difficult to guess what a solution to this differential equation is so um, rather than trying to guess a solution let's see if we can come up with some other interpretation of what this differential equation is trying to tell us about the unknown function y uh, so in particular let's concentrate on this side of the differential equation dy dx Right. A solution to a differential equation is some function, and uh, the dy dx on the graph of this function, dy dx is actually the slope of uh, the function at any particular point. Right. This dy dx is actually depends on x, so you know as you go from place to place on the solution. Um, dy dx can change and in fact right we we know that most differential equations have many solutions so maybe there's another solution up there and it will have its own tangent slopes like this so the left hand side of this differential equation is actually describing the slope of a solution because it's dy dx um, but since it depends on exactly where you are and what solution you're on in the xy plane, this is a function of both x and y. So it's the slope of the solution that goes through the point x comma y. And that's equal, what the equation is saying is that the slope of the solution that goes through the point x comma y is x times y. <clears throat> and this actually gives us uh, a trick for trying to um, understand what solutions are going to look at look like so to see how this works let's work just in the first quadrant and we're just going to uh, start with small x and y values just to sort of keep things under control so here's the x y plane for x and y values from 0 to 2 and what we can do is write all of the um, some points on the plane in this in this region and also the resulting value of dy dx at those points so one of the points in this region is 0 0 the origin and right now we have an x value and a y value we can just plug that into this uh, this function on the right side of our differential equation so 0 times 0 is 0 and what this tells us is that the slope of the solution that goes through the origin is zero. So to sketch that, right, we don't know what this, this solution does as you move away from zero, but we do know that right at the origin, at zero, zero, um, the slope of the solution is zero. And so we can indicate that by drawing a little horizontal tick mark, or sometimes they're called line elements, a little horizontal tick mark just to indicate that any solution that goes through this point actually has to be tangent to this little line segment because this little line segment has slope zero and that's what the solution is supposed to be at this point point. and we can do this for other points so we can do this at say zero comma one we get zero times one so x value times y value and that's zero so at 0 comma 1 we get this little line element and so on we can do this with all of the other uh, we can't do this with all points in this region because there are infinitely many but we can choose some representative points in this region maybe just the ones with integer coordinates so that would be 0 comma 2 uh, that slope there would be 0 and then 
uh, 1 comma 0, that would give us 1 times 0 is 0, and then 1 comma 1, finally get, we get 1 that isn't 0, that's 1 times 1, so 1, and then 1 comma 2, that gives us 2, 2 comma 0 is 0, 2 comma 1, that's going to give us 2 again, and then 2 comma 2, that's going to give us 4. And so now we can draw line elements for all of these, all of these points. So at 0 comma 2, we got 0. At 1 comma 0, we got 0. And then 1, and then 2. So we draw a little line segment that has slope 2. <clears throat> and then 0, 2, and 4. So slope 4 is kind of hard to draw, but that's pretty steep, so something like this. Okay, uh, so this gives us sort of an idea of what a solution would look like near any one of these points that we happen to draw these little tick marks. Now, um, this entire picture, by the way, is called a direction field or field or a slope field because it's telling you the slope of solutions. And remember, we drew this picture because at any point where we've drawn a tick mark, a solution has to be tangent to that tick mark. So the reason we do this picture is solutions are tangent to all of these tick marks in our slope field. And we can actually use this trick to sketch solutions, even though we can't find solutions exactly. All we have to do is sort of approximate what a graph would have to look like in order to always be tangent to all of these tick marks. Now, there's one that I can see right away. It just starts at 0 and stays at 0. So there's a solution, because it's tangent to all of these tick marks. We could start another one up here. It looks like at first it would go horizontal, but eventually it sort of gets uh, directed upwards by the tick marks further to the right. So maybe something like this. You could even start at a tick mark further to the right. So if we started over here at 2 comma 2 and followed it backwards, right? we have to start out tangent to this tick mark at 2 comma 2 and then run backwards. And uh, it's hard to say exactly what happens. Maybe something like this. It's hard to tell if these solutions are going to intersect. But wait, if, a, if two solutions intersected, that would mean we had a non-unique solution at the place where they intersect. And for this differential equation, right, our the function that is the right-hand side of the equation is x comma y, and it's continuous on the entire xy plane, and it's derivative with respect to y is just x, and that's continuous on the, on the entire xy plane. And so our existence and uniqueness theorem for first order equations says, given these two facts, that all solutions are unique. So since all solutions are unique for this particular differential equation, uh, solutions cannot intersect. If we had a place where they intersected, then at that, if we used that intersection point as an initial condition, you would have two solutions. But that can't happen because solutions are unique. So uh, this is the trick we'll use to sort of picture what solutions look like when we have a hard time solving uh, a, a differential equation exactly, or when we just want to see a picture. We can draw a direction field and then approximate solutions by sketching curves that are always tangent to the direction field. Now, I hope it occurs to you that this sort, this, uh, sort of picture is very repetitive to generate. It's uh, kind of a pain to make a huge table like this. Right? This is the sort of task that hopefully you only have to do a couple times in your your entire life. And if you ever actually want a good direction field, you just ask a computer for one because that's what computers are good at, this sort of repetitive drawing task. 
So let's uh, use a computer to get a really nice picture of a direction field for this particular differential equation. I like to use GeoGebra, and GeoGebra has a built-in uh, command to draw slope fields or direction fields, and it's called a slope field. And uh, to use slope field, you just enter the function that is the right-hand side of your first-order differential equation, and it was x times y. You can also add a number for how many, uh, how dense you want the line segments to be, right? If you make this number bigger, then it makes the line segments denser. So here's the full-blown uh, direction field <clears throat> as drawn by GeoGebra. One nice thing about using GeoGebra is then you can move around and look at different places in the XY plane. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. And also, one nice thing about GeoGebra is you can draw directly on the direction field using this pen tool. So if we wanted to approximate some solutions, right, GeoGebra has drawn so many little tick marks that we can actually do a pretty good job of sketching what a solution is going to look like. It's going to be something like this. Right? Or if we started up here, it would be something like this. Or if we started down here, it'd be something like this. But always these solutions are uh, should be tangent to the direction field. Right? I haven't done a perfect job right here, for example. That solution isn't tangent to that direction field, but I did my best. Let's look at another example of uh, sketching a direction field. <clears throat> so let's sketch a, a slope field for this differential equation, and let's also sketch any solutions that go through the point 1, 1. Now, even before we start uh, working on this, right, uh, let's check our existence in uniqueness theorem. So the function that is the right-hand side of the equation is y minus x. And where is this continuous? In the xy plane. This is continuous everywhere. And since this function is continuous everywhere, that means solutions exist for every initial condition. Okay, now to check for a uniqueness of solutions, let's calculate the derivative of this with respect to y, and that's just 1. <clears throat> this is also continuous everywhere, and so we get unique solutions. So we know ahead of time that we're, <laughs> we're not going to have multiple solutions through this initial condition. It's really just going to be one solution. Okay, so to sketch a slope field, let's do this one by hand. This is the last one that we'll do by hand, but just to have some practice. Let's do this one by hand. And again, let's only go up, let's only go uh, from zero to two, both in the x and the y direction. Okay, so the points that we have to work out are uh, zero, zero, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, uh, no, 1, 0, 1, 1. It's, it's good to have 1, 1 in our list of points here because that's the initial condition that we want. Then continuing, we get 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, and squeeze it in at the bottom, 2, 2. Okay, <clears throat> now to compute uh, dy dx for each of these points, remember we're just going to take these coordinates and plug them into y minus x. So we're always going to be doing y coordinate minus x coordinate. So for this first one, 0 minus 0 is 0, and then 1 minus 0 is 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and 2 minus 2 is 0. Okay, now we can draw all our tick marks for all of these points. So at the origin, that's slope 0, and then slope 1, and then slope 2. Now moving over to x coordinate 1, we get slope minus 1 and then slope 0, and then slope plus 1. And then moving over to x value 2, we get slope minus 2, and then minus 1, and then 0.
like this. <clears throat> so now we can sketch a solution through the point one one. So we're going to start at this tick mark. And it looks like the solution starts out horizontal, but then it starts getting pulled downwards by the tick marks over on the right. So maybe something like this. As we go to the left, it seems like, well, it seems like there's a, a solution that's going along these, these points that all have slope one. And our solution can't bump into this diagonal solution because remember, solutions are unique for this differential equation. So it seems like our solution is going to have to curve downwards like this. So we get something like this. Just to see if this really uh, is a, an accurate depiction of what this differential equation gives us, let's use GeoGebra to sketch some solutions as well. So let's maybe delete all of this stuff. And let's get a slope field. The equation was y minus x. And if you look just at this region um, near 1, 1, it does look generally like what our slope field looked like, although, of course, with many, many more tick marks than we were able to draw. So our solution was at uh, 1, 1. And if you just sort of let your eye follow these tick marks, it looks like we're going to get something like this. So as you go right, it sort of plunges downwards. And as you go left, it looks like it just kind of follows this diagonal line down into the left. So you can see if you have a first order equation and you can't solve it, uh, sketching a direction field can be a really great way to get some idea of what solutions are going to look like.